It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tally here. More recently I saw a documentary on Netflix about white privilege. And oh my god guys, it was really cringy. I just could not believe just how misinformed and just how crazy it was. And of course I'm going to respond to the parts that was like the most craziest to me for the documentary. And before I start to make the response to the parts that I found the most cringy, I first want to state that the footage that I'm going to respond to in this video is not the best kind of quality. Like basically there's like a lot of problems with the audio and so it might be a little bit hard to hear the audio for the video. And I couldn't find any way to capture the footage from Netflix without having to use my camera. So without further delay, let's respond to the documentary and give my personal thoughts about the whole entire thing. I think that there's different versions of the quote-unquote white person. So you have... Or white, white privilege. People, white privilege. Right. Mm -hmm. We're talking about white people in general. So, yeah. Uh, I would say that you have some white people in entertainment that are oblivious to certain opportunities that are easier for them to obtain. Your audition process is a lot easier. The acceptance for you coming in and wanting to get up is a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Mine's was a, please give me a reference. Hey, man, can you call? Hey, you mind talking to the owner of such and such? Hey, man, okay, I'm with my guys. I'm with Colin Quinn, Rich Ross, Bill Burr, Jim Norton. I'm associated with all the right people. Thank God they took a liking to me. I had to network and get myself in a position where everybody vouched. I'm not particularly sure if the struggles of becoming a comedian is actually evidence of white privilege. Mostly because it seems as though like people who are newcomers to a particular field, whether it's like comedians or arts or technology or filmmaking, they have like a lot of burdens, a lot of hustles to be like a person to get into the field. Like of course after you get like your degree in college or whatever, like the first thing is really hard to find somebody who's actually interested in you. Like sometimes you need a portfolio, sometimes you need to convince a person that you're actually good. And so basically like the struggles of becoming a comedian is not just exclusive of like, you know, black people. Like pretty much that happens to anybody, no matter their race or their circumstances. I think the thing that that people need to understand, especially white people, is that you guys know where you come from. You know your history. You know where you're going because you know where you came from. We don't know that. We got to take like a DNA test where our ancestry come in. And we still don't know if we were related to kings or queens or if we were farmers or if we built houses. We don't know. So you guys know that's the privilege you guys have. While it's really tragic that the majority of African Americans do not know where they come from, the truth of the matter is that I'm pretty sure that most white people who are born in this country also do not know where they come from. Like basically like the black people need to take like the DNA test, like there are some white people who do not have any idea about like their background and so they also take like the DNA test. I don't think it's like black and white, I don't think it's like only black people who do not know where they come from. I'm pretty sure it's like the case for most people who are born here. Like obviously like the daughters and sons of immigrants, they probably do know where they come from. But overall, I don't think like it's like something that's clear cut. I think some people do not know where they come from, whether they're black or white. Black people feel what an unequal, oppressive system has done to their communities. They feel it viscerally. They feel it every day. They feel it when they're going down the street and a cop pulls in behind them. They feel it when they walk into a store. They feel it when they're looking at an unequal paycheck. And so this is part of the work that white people have to do. I'm not sure if you're trying to imply that black people earn less money because they're black, because that has been illegal for a really long time. Nowadays, black people get the same amount of money for like the minimum wage jobs and the high race jobs like any other person in this country. It's the same thing for like any other race group. Like pretty much it's illegal to pay somebody less because they're like a certain gender or a certain race. And also the main reason why black people earn less money than white people, like with the pay gap, it's also due to like life choices. Of course there are some black people who have different interests and so that's why they probably make less money than their white counterparts. So basically life choices is probably the main reason 
why black people do in fact make less money than whites. Between 2014 and 2016, 16 million American citizens were wiped off of the voter rolls. We have created voter ID laws where you have about 25% of African Americans who do not have the IDs. And with the exact match program in Georgia, 53,000 voter registrations were held in this kind of electoral purgatory in the 2018 election, and 70% of those were African American. I'm not sure where this idea of the ID laws are inherently racist because I don't think that's really the case at all. It's not just black people who are required to like get like the IDs for stuff. Like it's also like every citizen of the United States that are required to get the IDs. Like basically by the time you're like 17, 18, you have to purchase like an ID to purchase stuff like alcohol, to basically buy the video games, to buy like the movies and other kind of stuff like gambling. And so basically by doing like these adult activities, you're required to use like the ID to purchase those kind of stuff. And also, like, pretty much, like, the minimum wage for, like, jobs in the United States kind of varies. Like, in some states, of course, it's, like, the national average is, like, $7.25 an hour. And then the, there's, like, some states that actually has, like, $15 an hour, depending on the state. And so how could a person who has, like, a $15 an hour job not afford, like, the ID to purchase, like, whatever they want to do? And also, like, uh, even with, like, $7.25 an hour, you can still probably save enough money to purchase, like, you know, the ID. There's also the case for, like, the Social Security stuff. Like, sometimes, like, of course, there are some people who get, like, the welfare from the state to purchase, like, the stuff, like, the food and whatever, but they cannot use, like, the money for, like, the ID. Are you kidding me? One of the things I've noticed in conversations on white privilege is that it always ends up being about people of color's experience. It comes to here, and it stays here, and it never becomes about whiteness. And I think that's one of the things when you ask, what can I or what can the we that is collectively identifying as white do? I honestly do not understand how people can unironically say whiteness. Like, basically, when people say that word, unironically, I always think about people who think that just being white by itself is like some sort of ideology. Like, oh my god, because of this, it's because of whiteness, because somebody is white and blah 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 blah. But I'm sorry, like, if somebody were to say the exact same thing about, I don't know, blackness? Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that most people would be upset about that. Like, <laughs> like I, I cannot imagine if somebody said, like, blackness. Because of this blackness, that's why X, Y, and Z is bad. A lot of white folks now who are having to, for the first time, sort of confront the interrogation of their privilege. And once you see it, you want to jealously guard it because you believe that it's a zero-sum game, right? If people of color gain, I lose. But the data tells us that white folks have far more wealth, far more advantage than their black and brown counterparts. White people do not earn more money than minorities. As a matter of fact, if you Google the data right now on your phone or whatever, like computer, what you'll find is that basically Asian people actually earn way more money on average than the rest of the entire country. I am not kidding. Like basically like the Asians get the most money out of this country. They're much richer than the white people. So this idea that white people somehow make more money than minorities is not true when in fact a minority group like the Asian people actually make more money than the white people. My take on the white privilege thing is I mean if we're going to say there's white privilege, then you would have to say that there's some form of privilege for any race or any gender, any religion. If you're an attractive woman, you have a privilege. I think there's all different kinds of privileges. I mean, I don't, I don't know if privilege is the right word. Do you think black people have privilege? In every, every race, like yeah, I said. Yeah, in every what kind of privilege do people of color get? Um, get college admission now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of a big one. That's a big one. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you! Like, basically, like, the Republican women in the documentary are, like, the only people that I knew that make the most sense in the whole entire clip. Like, seriously, like, holy crap. Like, whenever I do, like, those political tests on, like, uh, the internet, 
I always correlate the left leaning positions and go left, right? You make me agree with the freaking Republicans of all people to this kind of argument. Like, holy crap, guys. Like, that kind of means something if I actually agree with the Republicans more than the supposed left leaning person. That's just crazy. Yeah, a certain percentage have to be hired. You think that's wrong? Not that that's wrong, but to really feel like you need to hire someone based on their skin color, it, it seems wrong. Isn't it kind of the right thing to do to say, hey, let's give people who we were oppressing for so long a little bit of a head start, a little bit of an opportunity since we've all benefited from those opportunities. I know you don't think that you have. I definitely think I've benefited from the color of my skin. I don't think I would have gotten away with my career if I were a black girl. No, just absolutely not. I totally disagree with this concept that basically like minorities need handouts just because they're a certain minority. And that to me at least displays the bigotry of low expectations. Like I think no matter the social economic status or whatever, I think people still have a chance to make in this world. No matter if they're like they're black or white. Asian or whatever like basically I think everybody should have a fair chance to make it by their own hard work and determination like basically what happened in some colleges in America is that they started to discriminate against Asian people and against like white people for the SAT scores and so what happened was that basically if a person happens to be Asian or black they would reduct the scores for like the black person because they have higher scores in general and that's kind of, that's kind of like racist to me because I think that people should work hard to get whatever position that they want to get whatever job that they want and so basically by trying to have like people get money or whatever because they're a certain race it's kind of like really really racist in a way but anyway, that's my response to this whole entire documentary. It's like so much cringe. And I do not want to respond to it again. And if you guys like this video, please tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler